All right, we're still right on schedule, sort of. And happy to see that so many still here, <laughs> even though it's Friday afternoon. So I hand the stage over, big hand for Shamil Nabu. Thank you. Well, mm, oh, how we can get this out? Okay. Okay, so uh, today I'm going to be talking about browser acceptation, the the cool stuff about the browser acceptation actually that happened in the in the past, right now, and reinventing ideas, uh, sharing some sort of uh, uh, the research that I was doing on, along with other cybersecurity guys from Google research team and. Uh, yeah, uh, debugging the uh, exploit kits, the trying to inspect the delivery methods for the these kind of exploit kits. So it has actually two parts. The one part like is technical, the second one is scary. And uh, yeah, we're gonna see how it goes. So who am I? My name is Jimmy Napo. I work for Ingram Macro as a security consultant. I have a cool website called bufferoverflows.net. Check it out. So. Uh, Web browser. It's very interesting. It's a uh, it's a spot for the security researchers, actually, as well as the cyber criminals, right? And uh, and some stuff that I will be talking about today that is not developed by individuals, developed by uh, highly skilled guys like research institutions and stuff for doing uh, crime. And why it's interesting? Anyone is using browser. Yeah, anyone using the internet is using browser. So, yeah, this talk is not about DOM tree exploitation. These are bullshit. Sorry. So, we're gonna jump over. <laughs> if we're gonna exploit the web browser, how do we start? Yeah, we actually got a lot of methodologies to apply to this. The first one, yeah, we can go ahead with Wasm. Wasm wasn't existed a decade of, like uh, ago. So right now we have WebAssembly. This is what Wasm is. JavaScript core, browser engine, old fashioned, and the unknown. And to unknown, I'm referring to some sort of an environment simulation that is yeah, not known yet, <laughs> maybe in hipster prey. So the old fashioned one starting by Java Drive Boy, this is the most popular one. We got yeah, Java, Java, actually, there's Java Drive Boy and, and Silent Java Drive Boy, which is, was really common in the browser acceptation technique because it's across the platform. Um, it works very simple. It's easy to develop that exploits. It's easy to debug. The Java code is open source. Oracle guys, yeah, after Sun Microsystem is got by Oracle, so th there was a lot of uh, stuff happening in that move, uh, especially in the exploit development. So yeah, the other Flash applier, this is Microsoft Silverlight, the ActiveX for the Internet Explorer, exploit kits. So. We got Black Hole, we got Angular, Nuclear Magnitude, the, these kind of uh, cool guys. They have a fancy logo that just put their names. Uh, if you really dig into the exploit case and the crime history, you're going to find uh, really, as Manuel White says, the king of exploit kit is Black Hole. Why? Because it uses really cool delivery techniques. If we say about executing a malware, you know, like the, there is hackform.net and the, the, the spot for dark web and the, the cyber crime. You pay 10 bucks and you get a malware actually encrypted, full and detectable, bypassing the UAC, use actual, uh, user access control for Microsoft, I think. KCLR, ACLR, these kind of stuff. Actually, wh when, you, when you have the binary or the malware, it's, it's really not that complicated to run it on the system, but the idea is, or the complexity is, is to deliver it throughout the browser. And we got a lot of delivery technique within the browser, like uh, if we talk about the past, like the cross platform one, and so on. So when Black Hole is uh, dead, actually we got Angular, and Angular used very advanced uh, enumeration technique. I'm not gonna like analyze all of the stuff, only like the, the stuff that is related to the topic. So it's used like Internet Explorer, Flash Player, Adobe Reader, uh, zero day exploit back. Now, the cool enumeration technique that is used in Angular 
because yeah, when an angler is a start, this is what I'm reading in the news, it was actually targeting high individual profile. And uh, we got two stages of enumeration. The first stage is to enumerate, of course, the user engine, the version, the running operating system, and, and these kind of stuff. And then if it's like Internet Explorer 8, 9, 10, so it goes ahead and, yeah, it runs this uh, CV, which is recently discovered. Basically, it's, it's an exploit within the XML parser, within the Internet Explorer. Exploiting it is very basic. You just supply uh, a file that is exists on that system. And when this uh, trying to parse, the XML trying to parse that XML element, so it actually gives an error messages. That's how they, they know that that file is exist on the system or not. So based on the uh, on the error messages, but on the other hand, it got improved like development when when yeah they they used the REST protocol, which is they was actually supplying the uh, the local host, which point out into the road directory in the Windows system. Talking about Windows 86, so. Uh, this will print out the, 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 the content or the files within the directory. So what you get actually, you get these kind of stuff, dummies, hard to read, but it was actually used to enumerate if there is Casper Ski installed, image tool, the, uh, the Microsoft uh, exploit multigation tool, and these kind of stuff, because, because they have no control after running the exploit. So that's why they use the enumeration part, which is, I think it's a, it's a bit advanced. So uh, yeah, they basically supplied some sort of uh, vendors, if these vendors are exist. So they do uh, a different type of exploitation, but this is what the, the, the cool enumeration technique. And why they use this kind, th this kind of technique? I mean, what is the purpose? It's very simple. When we get an analyst, like yeah, someone supplied this into virus tool or this kind of stuff, so an analyst get a nightmare and he try to figure out what is the malware is and and, ha and how things is working. And basically, they supply, they know some file that is exist on the analyst PC, and then they try uh, to make a play around. Use after free. If you talk about the web browser, you're gonna go ahead with use after free, heap spray, and a lot of stuff. And myself, I love pony guys, so. Uh, Pong Pony, use after free. It's always been exist. Till now, it's, it's exist. So you're gonna find it even in the future, 10 years later, if we stay alive. So it's a, it's a stay. Yeah, it's a, it's really popular. The heap surprising attacks and this kind of use after free. In simple terms, we're not gonna like d dig into it. We are the, the the like if we say there is a developer that uh, made an application. So basically, he allocates. So it's a, it's a design error, right? So he he. Uh, he use a pointer called dangling pointer. In computer science, we have dangling pointer, wild pointer. These point to invalid memory address or object. And uh, when that area of memory is freed, so the attacker goes and reuse that memory area. They call it called reuse as well. So we got a block A, block B, block A is freed. Block B is yeah, controlled by the attacker. He used the previous allocated block and he tried to execute code. If you research about UF, uh, UF attacks, you're gonna find like memory leaks, this kind of stuff, but it is uh, mainly yeah, used for code execution because nothing to do with the, uh, with the memory address. This is a quick example. Uh, pointer pointing to an emalic, freed, reused, get the memory. So four years of happy UF in, in Firefox and CMonkey. And it was from 2007 till 2011. And if you really go, until now, it's a, 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 in some sort of UF exploitation, it still exists. If you go there, they use like, uh, they say disable JavaScript. If you really follow the Twitter tweets uh, of the guy, they say, yeah, okay, don't use Firefox also. So uh, in simple terms, how it works, uh, I'm gonna show you the, the, the POC, but in simple terms, like it's, uh, we initializing a, a fake V table. And this fee table point to a P, PSTR, which is in the Windows kernel. PSTR means binary string. Uh, it's a D word, D double word, uh, two, two bytes. So double is four byte. Each byte is 80 bit and 32 bit we got. So then the allocation for the hip start and we're filling it with a new shell code. So it's a really vanilla. 
if you can read my screen, you're going to find there is an object. This is how it works. There is an object, and this object, we, we call it using a foo. After calling it, we're creating some Unicode. That's why we use an escape over here, and then a shell code to pop up calculator, and then do the, uh, the, the, the heap spray. How the heap spray works, basically just sort of string. Just create a string variable in JavaScript if you want to play with the heap or the virtual memory. And then you assign some sort of junky value to that string. And then you add that string to himself. And then you subtract that string. So that's how it works. So we're creating 1,000 uh, fake allocation. And this is how it works. Now, the scary part, Snowman was in operation. Uh, I don't know if you heard about it, but it was targeting a really high individual profile. Uh, yeah, targeting United States military uh, guys and guys in French, uh, research institutions, and except try it mainly was working for uh, Windows uh, Internet Explorer 10. These, yeah, without di diving into the politics, but the really cool technique about this exploit, which is, yeah, published by FireEye, it's the delivery. This is the, the cool technique. So basically, a victim visit, an HTML web page, a server reply with an iframe. The iframe connect to the, to the server again, and then it, it call an img.html, which is, on the other hand, place an SWF file that has an action script. This is where the exploit is. And that the, the, the SWF file actually go ahead and try to, to fetch uh, Erdo GPG image. That image is not a placed on the file system memory, uh, on the file system. It's a placed in the memory as an array buffer. So it's like an aviation technique. And then it's dropped a DLL with a TXT file, and that DLL read from that TXT file. And uh, it's a second stage, or, and then it's run the, 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 the shell code, which is connected back uh, in a reverse, a reverse connection. So in, in, in very simple way, we got the URL loader, which makes an internal request. This is a snapshot that I took it. And then we, we got the array buffer uh, initialized. And then the underscore URL, which is, yeah, which is make the, uh, which is hold the, uh, the name for the uh, JPEG file. This is returned uh, into a loader. And that loader returned into the memory. And it, it gets executed. So it's, a, it's a, a buffer array executed within the memory, so nothing placed on the file system. Adobe Flash, I'm not, not going to talk a lot about it. So Reno Java drive by, so uh, yeah, if you, if you, yeah, I, I mean Java drive by exploit is, is very popular. So uh, I, after, I mean, I, I have no other space over here, just only for one year. Uh, the Reno is uh, basically a Java script engine written in Java, which basically you can yeah, implement JavaScript calls and, and this kind of dumb stuff into the Java itself. And then you build a communication channel. But it, has a, uh, it had a bug in its design where you can initialize uh, a script engine, and you call the JavaScript engine. And then after that, you bind it into the applet. Uh, at the top, it's extend an applet. So you bind into an applet, then you pass an object. And when this object is passed, you actually return an error, an error, uh, an error object. So basically, it's a native error class. That native error class uses a two-string method. That two-string method uh, is not controlled, which is you get like, yeah, there is no, uh, no context association with the current thread. Because basically, it's, it's a runnable object, so it runs in the thread. And that's uh, simply, you just place the Instead of meta exploit, you place the the stuff that you want to to be executed in Java. Now uh, I'm gonna go ahead with the. No one will do it, I think, but I don't have SSH. So uh, I just built an application in assembly. That's a, f a fully functional web application that I can give uh, instruction into the browser. And this code runs without a decoding or, or something. This code runs in native way, native. So if we're going to check it out, ah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, now it's OK. No cheat. 
So yeah, basically, it's an assembly application. We we, we got yeah, you know, uh, some sort of uh, binding section that checks and have have some sort of text, and then we we doing some assembly calls to instruct the web browser in order to put these and and yeah, manage these these stuff. The listener for the HTTP, the protocol, some some assembly instruction manually written right now. We got an oh output it as an app, run it, it's running. Go ahead. So yeah, we got some sort of functionality going on. If you want to inspect the source code, there's no cheat, there's nothing like with the JavaScript. It's it's mainly uh, based in, in assembly. But on the other hand now, if I talk about I want to fuzz the browser, for example, or write a native assembly code. This is really a pain, right? So that's why we got a fancy stuff called WebAssembly, which is basically, it's not an assembly. It's, it's, uh, it's basically uh, has its own textual structure, which is not, not an assembly. But the difference between the assembly, uh, the, the WebAssembly actually, and the, the JavaScript, because we already have the JavaScript is the web assembly is a compiler target. <laughs> okay, so the web assembly is a compiler target. It's faster than JavaScript. Uh, yeah, it's run a code. It's run to actually close to native, not native, close to native, and then uh, it's a QC, C, C, C++ code. And what does it bring to the table? Uh, speed, portability, flexibility this kind of stuff. Yeah, here you can see that the JavaScript code need to be parsed and then compile, optimize, then execute. Only the WASM code need to be decoded and compiled. And if you follow the, the, the current modern zero day right now, the, I mean the, the one that are published, you're gonna find that it's uh, written in the assembly modules and the WASM modules specifically in the import and export. So all the browsers right now support it. And the cool part, you can write a JavaScript uh, by calling assembly functions. So this is the difference between the yeah, normal assembly that we know and the textual format of the WASM and how the binary format. So the WASM binary structure, we got type, import, function, table, memory, global, export, start, element code, and each one of them is, is, a, is a separate topic. But we, we got the custom section, which is, uh, this is where the vulnerability started with the WASM parser. Uh, a custom section means that the section does not exist over here, and that, that is past the checks. So basically, WASM had a problem with the, with, with the verification of the order of these section. So, and the C code, in C code. Yeah, this is a place, there is a validate order, and this is, uh, if the previous section is a custom section, return true, and it's passed. So it was actually a design error. I'm not gonna talk about these, I'm just wrapping up. WebAssembly, yeah, if you build an application using uh, WebAssembly, you can have two methods for del delivery. One is downloading a file, the second one uh, on the fly. On the fly has uh, exploits also. And this is why the on the fly is, is faster, and also it's faster for the stagers. <laughs> WASM parser exploitation, we got some sort of functions within the, uh, within the parser itself. And if you really read up the code, you're gonna end up with a lot of heap stuff and, and UAF. Th this is one example of them. We got a function called get wasm buffer from value. And this function actually takes a, da a, da a data view, a ray of buffer, and it has a vector. And then this, this is passed to another function, which means we, we right now have a buffer twice is copied. We got out of read, uh, out, out of bound read. And now uh, we, we get a uh, memory copy out of that. This is how the POC looks like. Uh, passing a data view, loading it into WebAssembly module after creating some fake loops. 
and we yeah we we get type confusion when with with buffer overflow. Now I'm gonna perform a live demo, quick live demo about uh, using Gua Wasm in in exploitation. This exploit is made up by the workers. Why the workers used over here? It's because these workers runs in. Sorry. Yeah, these workers run in their own thread. So basically, we, we, we're defining some constants, the allocation for the spray holders, reclaiming, getting and finding the patterns, going out oh, very quick. So yeah, the reading addresses, the writing addresses, the corruption table, the reading objects, uh, cleaning up, getting the freed memory, the shell code, and yeah, the how, how the RSC is working. Basically, this is the spot that I want to talk about. We have a, a WASM, WASM converted into in, into hex, and this is loaded into uh, inside uh, integer array. And after loading it, we're creating an anonymous and, and we're passing anonymous definition for a WASM module loading the code that we defined over here and an import object. Then we return this as an export. Uh, export function, which we uh, it's gonna run a, a, in our SM file. Right after that, we we do some loop on the shell code. We verify some stuff. The post meshes over here is not an HTTP post meshes. It's more about the uh, the work itself. So we basically pass uh, the worker is a thread, and we pass a process to that thread. So it got run in its own thread. And initialization. We trigger the free into a try block catch. We try to find the information in the log. It's 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 like a um, yeah, huge exploit, but let's see it in action. This exploit I hosted it on my. Uh, I'm I'm using Google Fro Chrome right now. My system is patched. Everything is cool. And I hosted it on my website. I hope it works. It's gonna brute force for the uh, making some attempt for the allocation on the buffer. Uh, gonna take some time for brute forcing. <laughs> it's a brute forcing, and we got the calculator. <laughs> Why seems really dangerous. Moving on, we got the love story between AC, uh, SMGS and just-in-time compiler, and basically it's the same idea for the heap uh, spray of, of the flash player, the, the guy who came with this kind of exploitation. Actually, it's really cool because it doesn't use any code reuse, so there's basically no no brute force, nothing is going on, so yeah, just to see it in action very quick. A piece of junk, virtual allocation, read, write, execute, Three bytes stager and the virtual memory. Right after that, we got an MSF Venom encoded uh, to SMGS payload. We are getting some, yeah, the, the fake objects moving about the blocks, creating this allocation, getting the addresses, triggering the worker. Same technique, using the back end thread, and then passing the the the, the process. Getting the offset, looping over the blocks, triggering it by creating fake SVG, doing some sort of animation in order to allocate some sort of uh, memory stuff. Now trying to, I hope it works. Okay. And we got the CMD and instead of the calculator. <laughs> Moving on. Okay. Yeah, it's the same one that I see here, right? So yeah, the uh, the techniques for delivering the uh, web browser exploit. It's basically um, 
when I actually was entering into this, everyone telling me, don't click a link, don't click a link. So I was really afraid, but right now it's, uh, I think it's a true. Uh, we got a lot of social engineering uh, techniques that has been, uh, has been delivered. One cool thing about them is to enumerate the system. And before enumerating the system, actually, what they do, they create a pixel, one pixel image, right? So they host this image on uh, any kind of server. And when you go to your Gmail account in order to insert an image from a URL, what, what you give on the server side, you retain a base 64 GIF. So if the Google bot is requesting that, that image, that's how, how you insert an image into your Gmail browser. It's going to go fetch that. And on the other hand, when a request happens on the server side, you grab that request. So who requested that image? So you get the request data. Outlook sometimes blocks the, uh, the image loading image from external sites. But to be honest, uh, when you load an image from external side, it's really a problem. It's not only about enumerating the system. Now, if you, in my research, uh, and you can find this information documented, these guys load an iframe by default, so they don't block it. What means is that you send an email to the victim, right? And then you inject an iframe to your payload. And when this get executed, it's going to be executed within the email. And what the email use? Yeah, just Google what the browser engine each email what one of them is using. So I think this is the next generation for the exploit kit. The hidden part, my research, no one is mentioning this is the black hole for web browser exploitation. No one is writing about it. Mainly the DOM tree exploitation, like XSS, uh, this stuff. ISO type of exploitation. But on the other hand, you can set an item, get an item, remove item, clear. This is what, where, where, where this happens in the browser uh, local store. In 2018, I did the research that is, I was able to create an exploit that plays a string shell code into the browser, uh, browser uh, storage. But the only missing part that I had, how I can trigger that payload without going to execute something else. The problem that I had, actually what I did, I, I created an exploit.js, which is, yeah, the, yeah it's very basic. It, it's to store some, some sort of uh, shell code that is, yeah, it, it get it from a target.exe, which is like so a calculator. And then it set an item within that, the local storage, and then we get that item. But how, the, the problem is on the browser, we, we got a lot of limitations, actually. This, this is beyond like buffer overflow attacks. Is how I can let the browser read that shell code and getting it executed. I can't make the browser read that, but how I can get it executed. So I created an extractor, and when I run that extractor, it's going to go grab the, uh, the string within the browser and get it executed. So this is was the only missing part, but it's still ongoing research. WebAssembly is still ongoing. You're going to find a lot of bugs if you do static analysis. This is only the, the, the thing that I can show to you in 30-minute talk. Uh, the conclusion browser exploitation basically is a science in its own. So it's, a, it's, a, it's the most complex topic is in a binary, binary exploitation. But the, uh, the sources that are really found handy in order yeah, to enter this, uh, this is base is yeah, the exploit DB, POC, the Google research team binary uh, exploitation debugging for uh, CoreLand. If you do an OSEE, it's really cool. Uh, these are the credits for the guys, the references, and me and Pony, if you've got questions. So that's pretty much it. Thank you, Jamil. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I'm sure people will have questions for you uh, in the break. We're going to have a quick break. Oh, uh, okay. but do you time. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Do you have a, web, uh, a, a website that you can point people to for examples yeah, uh, in your blog and whatever? Yeah, I, uh, uh, th th these materials will be published. So uh, you, you're going to find it on Secti and, and on, on bufferoverflows.net where I, uh, I post stuff about research, scientific research. Yeah, recently was yeah, doing <laughs> research in the compiler design, programming language design, how we mm -hmm. can find exploit in that. So um, you can find a lot of cool stuff over there. Cool. So yep. thanks again, Jamil. And we are going to have just a short break, a 10 minute break, and then Don Tendler is going to tell us about how he bugs hotel rooms with video cameras and shit. So stick around. 
I don't know, jump up and down for 10 minutes and then we get back to the next talk. <laughs>